بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Section 4.7 Graphing and the Second Derivative Test The aims of this section are to describe the concept of concavity of the graph of a function f and related to f double prime and to introduce the second derivative test which is used to find relative extrema of functions in some cases then finally to sketch graphs of functions so first let us define what do we mean by concavity so this is definition 471 let f be a differentiable function on an interval a to b if f prime x is an increasing function on the interval a to b then the graph of the function f is concave up on the when interval a to b and if f prime is a decreasing function on an open interval a to b then the graph of f is concave down on the open interval a to b so here we have two types of concavity concave up and concave down if our function f differentiable on the open interval and f prime x increasing that's mean our function concave up if f prime x decreasing then that's mean our function f is concave down so here we have graphs of function which is having increasing slope and decreasing so for this one here we have this is f prime we take the tangent line so this is f prime x here also we have f prime x if go if you go the if you take a point here and you take another point here and you compare the tangent line between this one and this one this one will be less than this one because this one is less sharp this one is more sharp or tight so we said that this slope is increasing so our function concave up for this one here we have also another type of increasing here our slope is negative similarly this one is negative but here is more negative than this one so here it is small negative this one is large negative then this one is small negative so we'll get that once you go to the x direction or goes to this direction you find that your slope is increasing similarly for this one so here we have negative slope here we have a tangent line which is horizontal which is zero then we have positive slope so negative then zero then positive so our fun the slope is increasing that's mean our function is concave هنا لما نتكلم عن السلوب increasing و decreasing ما نتكلم عن إشارة للسلوب هل هو موجبة دائما أو سالبة دائما لا يعني لما نقول لاحظ هنا نلاحظ أنه هنا عندي النقطة هذه والنقطة الثانية هذه هنا موجود عندي سلوب موجب وهنا نفس الشيء سلوب موجب لكن لو جينا نقارن بين السلوب هذا وسلوب هذا هذا ممكن نحصل مثلا for example this one is two هذا بيكون مثلا more than two مثلا five فنلاحظ أنه two بعدين five إذا معناته سلوب increasing هنا عندنا سلوب ب النيجاتيف اللي هي بالسالب فلو كان مثلا هنا عندنا سالب وهنا نفس الشيء سالب طبعا بتكون السالب اللي هنا أكبر من اللي هنا فمعناته أنه كل ما جينا بهذا الاتجاه نلاحظ أن السلوب هنا سالب مثلا سالب twenty مثلا this one is سالب five بعدين بيجي مثلا zero and so on معناته كل ما نقترب أو كل ما goes x goes to this direction معناته السلوب ما يصير increasing فتزيد قيمته هنا بنفس الطريقة هنا السلوب عندنا نيجاتيف بالسالب طبعا بعدين هنا بيصير زيرو بعدين هنا بيصير موجب فلما يتغير السلوب لما كان نيجاتيف بعدين بيصير بوزيتيف إذا معناته السلوب increasing إذا نحن نقول الفنكشن concave up طبعا كل الثلاث الحالات اللي فوق هذه عبارة عن concave up similarly if you compare this one for the concave down for this one if we have a negative slope this one is negative slope this one is less sharp than this one so the slope here is decreasing so we conclude that our function concave down for this one also the slope is decreasing this one is positive this one is positive also but this one is greater than this one so we conclude that our slope is decreasing so that's mean our function concave down for the last one we have here positive slope then zero then we have negative slope so that's mean our slope is decreasing so our function is concave down بنفس الطريقة لما نجي نقارن اللي هو slope لل concave down بنلاحظ هذا السلوب عبارة عن negative وهذا نفس الشيء negative 
بس النيجاتيف اللي هنا اقل عن النيجاتيف اللي هنا النيجاتيف اللي موجوده هنا هي عباره عن اقل عن النيجاتيف موجوده هنا فعلى اساس كده ان السلوب مالي يصير ديكريزنج فتقل قيمه السلوب هنا بنفس الحاله عندنا السلوب ديكريزنج اذا هنا بوزيتيف وهذه نفس الشيء بوزيتيف لكن هذه بوزيتيف بقيمه عاليه هنا بوزيتيف بقيمه اقل يعني مثلا هنا 10 هنا بيصير مثلا اقل من 10 اللي هي 5 or 2 or something هنا في آخر واحدة عندنا سلوب ديكريزنج نفس الشيء هنا عندنا بوزيتيف بعدين بيصير زيرو بعدين يرجع نيجاتيف إذا من بوزيتيف إلى نيجاتيف سلوب صار ديكريزنج إذا الفانكشن كونكيف داون so here also we have a graph for the, some function which is concave up concave down so this one is a type of concave up this one is concave down this one have two types of concavity From A to C, it is concave down. Then from C to B, it is concave up. If you see here, the f prime for this one, since your function is concave up, that means f prime increasing. Here we have negative f prime. Then here we have positive f prime. So from negative to positive, that means f prime is increasing. For this one, we have concave down. Here we have positive f prime. Here we have negative f prime. So from positive to negative, our function, uh, the slope is decreasing, so our function is concave down. Similarly for this one, it has two types of concavity, concave down and concave up. How to test for concavity using the second derivative of the function? So here we will use the second derivative to know if the function concave up or concave down. So this is theorem 471. Let f be a function for which f double prime exists on the interval a to b. If f double prime x greater than 0 for all x in the interval a to b, then the graph of f is concave up in the interval a to b. So, if the second derivative is greater than 0, that means our function concave up. Similarly, if f double prime x less than 0 for all x in the open interval a to b, then the graph of f is concave down on the open interval a to b. So here if your second derivative is less than 0, then we conclude that this function is concave down. So, if our function f prime differentiable on the open interval a to b, and the second derivative is greater than 0 for all x in the open interval, we conclude f concave up. If the, derivative less, or if the second derivative less than 0 for all x, then our function f Concave down. So here let us see example one. Determine the intervals on which the graph of fx is equal x cube plus 9 over 2x square is concave up and the intervals on which the graph is concave down. So to know concave up or concave down, we'll use this one, the second derivative test. So first we need to find f prime x. So f prime x is equal, the derivative of this one will be 3x squared plus 2 multiplied by 9 over 2x. So this will give us 3x squared plus 9x. Now if you want to find the second derivative, so we need to differentiate this one again. So f double prime x will be, derivative of 3x squared will be 6x plus derivative of 9x will be 9. So the second derivative will be equal 3 multiplied by 2x plus 3. Now we need to know on which interval this function is positive and on which interval it is negative. Because, you know here we say that if the second derivative greater than 0, then that means it is concave up. If it is less than 0, it is concave down. Here we will solve f double prime x is equal to 0. So that means 3 multiplied by 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. So that will give us x is equal minus 3 over 2. So now we will draw a table. Here we have x, the value of x. Here we have the value of the second derivative. We will take from minus infinity to minus 3 over 2, then from minus 3 over 2 to infinity. Then we will test the second derivative at the interval from minus infinity to minus 3 over 2. Take any number and substitute in this function. You will get it will be negative. Then for the interval from minus 3 over 2 to infinity, take any number and substitute in the second derivative in this function, you will see it is positive. So, f double prime x is less than 0 for x in the open interval from minus infinity to minus 3 over 2. So, we conclude that it is concave down.
because here we said if it is less than zero then it is concave down so here it is less than zero we conclude it is concave down for the interval from minus 3 over 2 to infinity f double prime x is greater than zero then we conclude that f is concave up on this interval so here we have this graph and we see from the graph from minus infinity to minus 3 over 2 the function is concave down then from minus 3 over 2 to infinity the function is concave up so this function has the two types of concavity concave down and concave up here we have some definition of something which is called point of inflection or inflection point so the definition for 7 to explain us what do we mean by the point of inflection let f be continuous on an interval a to b containing the number c a point c f c is a point of inflection of the graph of f there is a tangent line at c f c and the graph change concavity at this point so the point will be a point of inflection if there is a tangent line at this point and the graph change concavity at this point so inflection point at the point a f of a or at the point c f of c if f is continuous at a and f change concavity at a so for example this one this one is a polynomial and it is continuous everywhere we find that f, f double prime x is equal minus 3 over 2 and we test the second derivative for the interval minus infinity to minus 3 over 2 then from minus 3 over 2 to infinity we see that the function before minus 3 over 2 is negative then after minus 3 over 2 it is positive we see from the graph this function change concavity at the point minus 3 over 2 so we conclude that the point minus 3 over 2 is a point of inflection because our function is continuous at this point and also our function change concavity at this point so to say that any point is a point of inflection the function should be continuous at this point or has a tangent line that's mean it is differentiable also and also the function change concavity then how to know that any point is is it a point of inflection or not so this is in definition for 7 2 if the point c f of c is a point of inflection for the graph of a function f then either f double prime c is equal to zero or f double prime c does not exist يعني على اساس احدد هل هذا البوينت هي بوينت اوف انفليكشن او لا فاول شيء ايش بجيب اللي سكند ديريفيتيف بساويها بالصفر او does not exist بعدين بسوي تشيك عند اللي هي سكند ديريفيتيف عند النقاط هذول إذا طلعت نفس الكيس هذه إنه الفانكشن تشينج كونكيفيتي كانت نيجاتيف بعدين بوزيتيف أو بوزيتيف بعدين نيجاتيف إذا على طول بقول البوينت عبارة عن بوينت أوف انفليكشن طبعا لازم البوينت يكون موجودة في الدومين لكن في حالة إنه مثلا طلع هنا عندي نيجاتيف نيجاتيف أو بوزيتيف بوزيتيف إذا الفانكشن ما غيرت الكونكيفيتي إذا ما بقدر أقول إنها بوينت أوف انفليكشن إذا إذا كانت البوينت عبارة عن بوينت أوف انفليكشن إذا على طول نعرف إنه يا السكند ديريفيتيف عند هذا البوينت تساوي زيرو أو السكند ديريفيتيف عند هذا البوينت does not exist لكن السؤال if f double prime c is equal to zero or f double prime c does not exist does this imply that c f of c is a point of inflection for sure no it's similarly like the critical point we see that if the function has a relative maximum or minimum at a point so we will guarantee that at this relative extrema the function has a critical but in case the function has a, criti a critical so that does not guarantee that the function has an extrema similarly if the function or if the second derivative at c is equal to zero or the second derivative at c does not exist that does not guarantee that the function has a point of inflection يعني لو كانت مثلا second derivative تساوي zero عند النقطة c أو second derivative ما موجودة عند النقطة C إذا هذا ما يضمن إنه الفانكشن عندها a point of inflection عند C طبعا لازم أول شيء نتحقق من الشرط الثاني إنه الفانكشن change concavity إنها تتغير من concave up إلى down أو العكس من down إلى 